Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. good morning. Today we are invited to focus on the life of one of our companions in our Advent journey, Saint Joseph, the husband of Mary and the foster father of Jesus. In Saint Matthew's narrative, our gospel reading today, he is called as a just or a righteous man. The evangelist tells us that the conception of Jesus in the womb of Mary happened during the betrothal period of marriage covenant of Mary and Joseph. It is worth noting that in ancient Judaism, betrothal is more than our modern engagement. Jewish marriage has two crucial stages according to Torah law. The first stage is called Kiddushin, or betrothal period, which was as legally binding as marriage. Bible scholars would say that if at any time during this phase of marriage, either person violated their vows, a formal divorce was required to nullify the marriage. Mary and Joseph were legally married and during the approximate 12 month period of their betrothal, they had no physical relationship and lived in separate houses. The second stage is known as Nisuin, which was the wedding ceremony that lasted for seven days. After ana maubana ang maong ang babae, nadto sa iyang bana. Now it was in the first stage of their marriage that Mary conceived Jesus, the Son of God. Joseph could have divorced Mary because of this, based on the law that they had. It is said that by law, Mary could have been stoned to death for what others may have thought of her situation. Joseph must have been overwhelmed upon knowing that Mary was bearing a child in her womb even before the consummation of their marriage through a conjugal act. Matthew narrates to us that since Joseph was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose Mary to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. But why, we ask? In his book entitled Joy to the World, Scott Hahn mentioned a number of explanations from saints and scholars, which fall into three categories or theories. The suspicion theory, the perplexity theory, and the reverence theory. Saint Thomas Aquinas, Saint Bernard of Clairvaux, and Saint Jose Maria found the third explanation as the most satisfying since it is more consistent with the just and discreet character of Joseph. The reverence theory holds that, Jesus, that Joseph wanted to separate quietly from Mary out of a reverence to the divine mystery being revealed through Mary. Joseph believed that Mary was a woman of integrity and deep piety that was experiencing, who was experiencing a deep divine or a divine miracle. Joseph considered himself unworthy to be part of God's work. He thought at first that it would be best for him not to be an obstacle to God's plan, which was gradually unfolding in the life of Mary. And yet, when the angel of the Lord told him in a dream that he will play a crucial role in the life and mission of both Mary and the child she was bearing, Joseph did not hesitate to obey the will of God. Saint Matthew tells us, when Joseph awoke, he did as the angel had commanded him and took his wife into his home. 
Here, we can ask ourselves, what lessons can be drawn from the life and mission of St. Joseph? Allow me to underline these two points. First, St. Joseph inspires us to be always righteous or just before God and others. Righteousness or justice is revealed in one's capacity to seek the will of God in everything. It is giving what is due to God and to others. Joseph must have certain plans for the new family that he was building, but he learned to let go of these personal plans in order to assume God's plans. He did what was just by submitting himself totally to God and by faithfully taking the role as husband of Mary and legal father of Jesus. My dear friends, how just are we in our relationship with God and others? Ating hinundumang nga, kining paghahinog panahon alang sa ginoo, kining pagsimba, this is also an act of justice. Mamagin ang inigsulti na to sa prefacio. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We say, it is right and just. Whenever we have a space for God in our lives, we give what is due to God, our Creator and Redeemer. And this act of righteousness and justice ought to overflow in, in our relationship with the people around us. Kanang tarong mo na to atong trabaho, kay nakadawa ta og sakto nga sweldo, that's an act of justice. Kanang muhatag ta og sakto nga sweldo og benefits sa mga nagtrabaho, alang ka na to. Kanang isudyante ka o niya, tarong mo na yung pag-eskwila, kay dilalim ang paningkamot sa imong ginikanan, aron makatungha ka, aron naakay, kana bang future, no? bright future, giving what is due to God and to others. Saint Joseph continues to inspire us to always practice justice or righteousness wherever we may be. Second, Saint Joseph teaches us to always place our trust in the Lord, which is a facet of faith. Reflecting on the life of Saint Joseph, we perceive how he put his trust in the Lord like Mary. And deniably, Joseph had fears and doubts, but he allowed himself in the end to be led by the Spirit of God. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. These words must have remained in, her, in his heart so that he was docile to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Joseph had his own plans, but when God intervened, instead of resisting to the plan of God, he obeyed and learned to trust in God who is faithful to all his promises. Hinumdum ko ka Higayon nga, nilabay ko sa Qatar, gikan to sa akong pag sa Spain. O niya, hining na ay, iduol na ko, ang i-share sa yung kinabuhay. Pagkita niya nga na ay pare, o saka OFW. Hiningon siya, Father, na nasa ko, balik ka sa kong trabaho. Hiningon siya nga, libya sa yun, Father, kay kanang lahi, lahi ko ng layo ka sa pamilya. Niya na ay mga risgo sa akong trabaho din eh. Pero, gihimo na ko ang tanan para man sa ako ang pamilya. Para sa ako ang mga anak nga nag -squila. Isalig ko sa ginoo, Father, nga di ko niya pasagdan. Kay matag-adlaw sa akong kinabuhi, musangpit ko sa ginoo, musalig ko sa ginoo. That's placing our trust in the Lord. And we can never go wrong if we simply have faith and learn to place everything in the hands of God. As we continue to journey through the season of Advent, we hope and pray that through the intercession of Mary and Joseph, we may grow in righteousness and trust in the Lord 
our Emmanuel, God who is with us. Amen.